What's going on everybody? It's your boy here for a, uh, another review. This is uh, going to be Love Hip Hop New York Season 6 Episode 1. I know things look a little bit different. I'm trying to stem my motherfucking game up and shit. I'm going to have to work with this because this is this is doing too much moving for me, but that's okay. So before I even get into this, I'm going to let y'all know right quick. I'm going to briefly talk about two sets of individuals, but don't expect me to say a whole lot about them throughout the fucking season. If y'all watch my periscopes and shit, I already told y'all. Fucking am uh, Tara, uh, Amina, and Peter. Y'all not finna hear a whole lot about them. Yandy and uh, Mendeecy, not finna hear a lot about them. Why? Because the shit done played out, and I ain't got no sympathy for these motherfuckers. So, I'm going to give my time to all the motherfuckers that matter. Okay. So, we start off with Yandy, and, you know, she's giving the motherfucking uh, intro instead of Mona. I think both of them need not give the motherfucking intro, because they both sound very tired and boring as shit. Uh, so, we got Pam, uh, not Pam, uh, Remy, she pretty much talks about being away for six years, four months, five days, got the shit down to a T. I was waiting for the 10 minute motherfucking seconds and shit. And, you know, Pap, uh, Papoose, who is her husband, is making sure that, you know, she does not violate her fucking parole. You know, pretty much, cause she was chilling with uh, Rashid Ali, and you know, she was like, "Yeah, I'ma just chill out." Uh, <laughs> Papu was like, uh, "No, nah, we on the time schedule. Let go." And she ain't argue. She got the fuck up, and she uh, moved. But we'll talk more about that. Yandy and DC. Long story short, they in the condo. I don't know how the fuck they in the, in the condo, but okay, play the shit up for the camera. In the condo, they need to move into a bigger house for them and all them motherfucking uh, you know, foot ninja that they asses got. So they're arguing about that because their combined incomes, they can mm -hmm, combine incomes. All right, stop telling on yourself. And uh, his whole thing is let's not do that because I decided to plead deal. Let's wait for the results to come out. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah. Moving on. Peter and Tara, long story short, Tara, they moved close in the, is in the same fucking apartment building as him and uh, fucking Amina. If I'm not mistaken, I think they're on the same motherfucking floor. And apparently he didn't help her move in. They was, you know, drinking it up. And then these motherfuckers in their bed together. Anyway. Uh, and Amina only agreed to this whole Peter will come home at night. And I, I would say that I, I was rude for her. But, you know, that shit dead. Yeah, because even though we all thought that she was going to fight for her independence last season. And that she was actually going to do something smart. I knew better. I fucking knew better. Uh, Bianca, she's a rapper. She uh, pretty much did the song uh, Chicken Noodle Soup. She's in a studio working with Yandy. Uh, she pretty much said the reason she fell off is because, you know, her brother passed away right before that song came out, and that was her support system. So, not having a support system uh, pretty much caused her to fall off. So, you know, she's trying to get back on her, you know, grime and shit. Um, and Yandy pretty much tells her, all right, what I want you to do is since DJ Self. Talk more about him in a minute. Since he's having like an artist showcase, you know, you need to go ahead and go there and pretty much prove to me, show me what you can do. So Rashida, uh, she is doing management now. She's going to be managing these girls named Mo and Lexi. And they have been now since 2010. I ain't heard of them. And they are, their stage name is Bad Bitches on Deck. Alright, so... We don't really hear a whole lot about Rashida, but we find out that Mo, the girl with the colored hair, uh, giving me a uh, broke down. Uh, what's that girl off of uh, Love of Hip Hop Atlanta? Damn it, I can't think of her name. But y'all, y'all know the, the girl that's uh, married to Tony. She giving me her, but like a broke down version of her, like a gutter hood rap version of her. I'm just saying, real talk. But she ended up getting into a fight with uh, Bianca, and pretty much Bianca uh, used <clears throat> the club that you put on the car, so motherfuckers don't, uh, you know, take your car and shit, use that, bust upside a motherfucker head, gave her like, it was either 10 or 15 stitches, I don't fucking remember. And Rashida, the whole thing is, well, y'all, like, she wants them at the show, at the showcase. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mona, I see you. Well, them at the showcase with her, but the whole thing is, well, y'all need to behave. And my thing is this, if you know that you have a loose cannon on as a fucking client, regardless of what fucking opportunities you have, if you know that she's a loose fucking cannon, why would you bring her to an event knowing somebody else is fucking there? It's fucking stupid. Fucking idiotic. Move the fuck on. <clears throat> so, Remy and Papoos, you know, though they're sitting down, they're arguing about their respective uh, experiences with her being away, because she doesn't like feeling... You know, like she's still in prison by being on like a rigid schedule. His whole thing is you might have been locked up, but you don't know what we went through. You know, it's one thing for you to be locked 
locked up, but you don't know how it feels for us, more or less for me, to, for you to be my wife and to see you going through. It's almost like I'm in, like I am in the jail cell with you, but like mentally I'm in captivity, which I can understand both sides. <clears throat> her main thing, and he probably should have told her, just like you a grown ass woman, you can do what the fuck you want to do. But I'm trying to keep your ass out of jail because if you sit here <clears throat> and don't be in by the fucking curfew that's you know put down. Your ass going to fuck back to jail. So if you didn't enjoy it, you might want to get the fuck with the program. I know that sounds a little bit harsh, but hey, it is what it is. But what I will say is I tip my head off to him because, you know, he pretty much is uh being the man in the motherfucking uh, relationship. It wasn't no honey. I think it sounded like it was like, let's go. It wasn't no if, no ands, no buts. And she was being, you know, the submissive wife got up and left. But they talked about it later rather than turn the fuck up. So, you know, Remy got some maturity on her. I ain't mad at him. Uh, DJ Self, uh, apparently he's a big deal in New York on the uh, radio and DJ scene. Move the fuck on. Uh, Mariah Lynn, she went from, you know, false to home to hitting the streets to rapping. And she will be participating in the showcase too. I really don't think that she got any, you know, good skills, but it's a yeah, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Papusa Remy, they're pretty much, uh, I guess, celebrating the Remy being out for almost a year and whatnot. Papoose wants them to have children because he has three children. She has one, but they don't have any together. And she pretty much tells him, you give me a wedding this year, I'll give you kids next year. Which sounds good, but as we all know, as women get older, you know, it becomes more and more complicated for them to not necessarily have children, but, you know, those health complications are there. So, uh, just putting that out there, but they agree on it, it is what it is. <clears throat> So at the showcase, you know, Mo does a weak ass rap against Bianca. Y'all know, I don't, I don't see if, uh, you know, the hip hop game right now, I miss the old school rap with who's rapping about shit, but that was weak as shit. I'm just saying. Uh, Mariah Lynn gets her that her shit was weak too. And come to find out, her and Rich used to do something back in the day, but I don't know why the fuck I'm surprised. Because I'm not. <clears throat> and then Bianca gets up there, she kills that shit, goes smooth as fuck in. I was just like, okay, okay. And also, real shit, uh, much love from KY. She did a Periscope last night, tangent. And you know, we were talking about some random ass shit. I hope she uploads that video. But uh, if not, you guys, if y'all get done watching this, try to go and watch uh, that Periscope before it goes down. You know, we talked about like it was her and everybody being engaged talking about a whole lot. And you talking about the rap game and how we need more female artists. If you go back to the 90s, you know, there was more than one female rapper. You had Missy, you had MC Light, you had Queen Latifah, you had Lil' Kim. Like, you had a plethora of female artists, and having all these different female artists forced the others to make sure that when they came out with some shit, it was some fucking fire, not just having one fucking artist dominating the whole fucking scene. Catch that. Um, <clears throat> so... So Mo decides she wants to sit down with uh, Bianca pretty much telling her in essence like you know I forget what the fuck she said but I guess trying to smooth things over Bianca's not having it and you know Mo starts getting a little rambunctious or whatnot and Bianca's like do I need to give you some more fucking stitches and then again I don't know what the fuck is over reality television but this bitch spits at Mo spits at Bianca didn't hit her but she spits at her and that right there goes to show you when a motherfucker ain't got no motherfucking hands. I'm just saying. You know, when you got to <clears throat> spit at slash on somebody, you, nine times out of ten, you ain't got no motherfucking hands. Now, Yandy, man, and Bianca, like, well, is this how you conduct yourself in the business setting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can understand, you know, that. Because, I mean, again, it is what it is. But when you got beef with somebody like that and you done bust a motherfucker upside their motherfucking head, it's kind of hard to sit here, you know, be professional. I'm just saying. <sighs> We're almost done, y'all. I guess I can t I can label this a quickie because, you know, they ain't, they ain't really give a shit. But uh, Papoos, uh, he brings Remy to the place that he's going to hold their wedding. Uh, and he actually gets down and give her a proper uh, proposal because, you know, they did get married while she was in prison. You know, like I said, I think it was uh, Sean Bradley that kind of gave a detail, like, talked about that in detail about why that was so just to check him out if I could find a video why that's uploading I'll put it in but you know she didn't even let the man get through it. like yeah I do I do I was like all right but you can tell that there is love there and I really appreciate that and then Mendeecey uh it ends with Mendeecey telling <clears throat> yeah that he gonna be going away for I think like five to twenty and she trying to figure out how to da, 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 da. I don't fucking care because we all don't fucking care you knew what the fuck was gonna go on you do this shit from Jump Street you do this shit when you marry his ass I put her in the same motherfucking boat as Fake Tra 
felon fraudulent parts. You knew what the fuck his ass was doing before you fucking married his ass. So please do not expect me to have any fucking sympathy. I have sympathy for the children. I hope and pray that they can move through this time. But uh, I ain't got no sympathy for y'all. So you guys, that's all I have. Rate, comment, subscribe, and share. Hopefully you enjoy the review. And I will see you guys on the next video. And right quick, I will be uh, letting you guys know tomorrow who won my giveaway. So I'll see you guys then. Bye. <laughs>